Hello and welcome to the first patch blocks tutorial. My name is Sebastian Heinz and I give you a brief introduction into how the software works and how you get some noise out of your patch blocks hardware. Now you might have noticed the screen resolution is uh, very low. The reason for that is it's just magnifying everything so that you can see that better in YouTube. Okay, let's get started. Uh, you see a few panels here and in the, in the center there's a big white area. The panels you can move around to uh, just rearrange things if you want to. You can also hide them and make them visible again. Now, um, this one I will talk about later. The emulator, that is like some sort of um, representative fake of the patch blocks hardware controls. Uh, the faders here are what the knobs are on the hardware and these are the buttons, so this would be the button is pressed, this is the button is not pressed. And the toolbox over here, the browser, that is like your your repertoire of software algorithm blocks or objects that you can use like Lego uh, blocks and assemble them here on your workbench to build your sound producing algorithm. Let's get started with just a very simple patch. In this case, uh, we just use an oscillator that we can change the frequency of. And we start with an object called audio output. That's usually the first object you would place. That is your route uh, from your software out into the world of speakers and headphones and whatever. Now, once that's done, you just drag it over there. Um, the next thing would be something that produces sound, some sort of generator. Now, you see here is a tab for generators. And we grab this one here, which is a saw oscillator. Just place it somewhere above your audio output. And then connect them both with a cable. In order to do so, just go with the mouse under here. You see the little square appears. That means you can click and drag. And then the same applies to if you want to connect it somewhere. Just make sure that you see that square and then release it and your blocks are connected. You can find out about what the inputs or outputs are, just hover with the mouse over them and you get this little tooltip. Also you get some info about what the block is actually doing uh, by just hovering with the mouse over it. If you want more info about the block, <coughs> just open the help browser and there you go, lots of blah blah. Uh, just a quick info about what these oscillators spit out and what the audio input expects. Uh, the range of values that the oscillators produce have, uh, or the signal has an amplitude of 1 and is centered around 0. So that means they produce values between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. And that's also the range that the audio output expects. And also what you get out of the audio input if you root external audio into it. Only exception with the generators is impulse that gives you a zero value with an impulse of one. Uh, but all other generators give you something between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. Okay, now uh, let's see how this sounds like. That was very straightforward. Just plug this into your audio output and listen to it with the emulator by clicking on this button. There you go. That's your 440 sawtooth. Now, you notice, as soon as I click on a block, I get stuff appearing here in the inspector. Uh, here I can, for example, just change the frequency of that oscillator. Let's use 300, just type it in and press enter, or click somewhere else and the value will be updated. Emulate this again. Now the frequency has changed. With this inspector, it works like this. Most of the inputs um, of blocks appear here as a number field. Now that means if you connect something to it that will be a dynamic value but if you type in something here you set it to a fixed value. Not all of the number fields that you have here actually have an input and not all of the inputs necessarily have uh, a field in the inspector here but most of the inputs do. Now this is all uh, well yeah, quite nice. You get some sound out of your computer. If you would put it on the patch block, you would get some sound there too. But it's just a static tone. Let's add some interactivity by adding um, one of the knobs. Let's connect one of the knobs of the patch blocks to
to the frequency of the sawtooth. For this you need an object called controls, which you also find in the input and output section. Just drag it somewhere above your uh, sawtooth oscillator. Now if you look at it, you've got like left knob, right knob, left button, oh that's all good. Intuitively you would think it's just connect the left knob to the frequency. But wait a second, this doesn't really work like it. Because a closer look at the controls object reveals that it produces values between 0 and 1 for the knobs and either a 0 or 1 for the buttons. Now that means this is some sort of of number between 0 and 1, if it's like halfway uh, in the middle of the center position, it would produce a 0.5. Well, if you would plug this directly to the frequency, you get frequencies between 0 and 1 hertz, which are way too low, you wouldn't hear anything, that doesn't make any sense. Now, in order to bring that, that sort of uh, range of values that you get here into a range that makes sense for the frequency, you need a bit of math. The multiply object will do the trick because you can just multiply that range by, let's say, 1000. And that produce that would produce values from 0 up to 1000. Because if it's, let's say, 1 here times 1000 is 1000 here, it's like, let's say, 0 0.5, it would be 500, and 0 would still be 0. Now pay close attention to this multiply object. If I click on that, you see two values here value 1, value 2. Both are fixed values. If I type something in and connect it, it wouldn't make really sense because they wouldn't change. So pretty pointless. But if I connect something to the first value and click on this again, you can see this one is now used. So I can't type in a fixed value anymore because it is connected to a dynamic value, the controls output. And the second one would then be a fixed value of 1000. Now I can just connect this to my uh, to my frequency of the sawtooth, sawtooth, and press emulate, and I don't hear anything. Oh, it's broken. No, it's not. Just look at these faders. They're all the way down. That means we're basically producing a signal of zero hertz, which is non-existent. As soon as I move this up, there we go. nice. Now you might have noticed as well that there are green and red cables. What is the difference there? Well the red cables are generally used for audio signals. So everything that is like an audio signal that has to be updated at the sampling rate of 20,000 Hertz should run in this audio rate space um, and be connected to the red cable. Now, signals that don't need to be uh, executed that often, like not 20,000 times a second, you can put that into a control rate. That saves a lot of CPU. And in this case, you get a signal like that from the controls block, um, and then you multiply it. But the multiply runs an audio rate, which is a bit too fast. You don't need that, because it's not really an audio signal here. It's an audio signal from here on, but it's not one here. So you just select that and say control rate. This is generally good practice, taking care of this. That will save you a lot of CPU and allows you to just put more on one uh, of the patch blocks. Okay, does it still work? Mm. Yes, of course it does. Da, 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 da. Good. Now, that is pretty much your first patch. Let's get that onto the patch block. So what you do is you make sure that the patch block is turned off. And you connect it with this USB cable to a USB port and then turn it on. Now, a quick look at my desktop shows a drive here. That drive is actually my patch block. You can also open it and have a look inside. And you see there is a firmware.bin, which is the actual program that runs in the chip. Now, if that appears, that's good. That means my patch block is connected and I can update it. Which I do with this button here, compile patch and update firmware. And it just compiles it and says firmware updated, yay, that's great. If something went wrong or so, if you notice strange behavior, you can always look in the console. And if it says something like successfully updated and so forth, and so on and so forth. And no errors here, the warnings are fine, just ignore them. If there is an error, then there's something wrong. It also says 
uh, the volume is unmounted, which is good. It's gone here as well. That means you can just unplug it from the computer and you don't get this annoying message uh, that OSX produces if you don't unmount a drive. So I'm going to do this now. I unplug my patch block and I turn it off. Connect it to speakers or headphones, whatever you use, and then turn it back on. So you have to turn it off and turn it back on once you uh, updated it. Okay. So the way it works is very simple. If it's connected via USB, you turn it on, it mounts as this flash drive. If it's not connected on the USB port and you turn it on, it runs the firmware that's on it. And that's it so far. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have a lot of fun with these little machines. There will be more tutorials um, explaining like how to sequence things and a bit of synthesis and all this. Uh, but for now, this should be enough to get you started. Cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.